For many years, the Holyoke Public Schools has been the epicenter of the school to prison pipeline in Massachusetts. In 2015, a group of students and adult allies joined forces to say enough is enough. Since then, Palante has successfully carved out a youth-led transformative program in our school. Schools are microcosms of the larger society, but what we know is that the status quo isn't working for a lot of young people. We brought young people together to start to think about what would it look like to do things differently. When a young person or any person in our communities is hurting, is harming um, themselves or others, you don't push them away, you bring them in, you include them. A lot of people ask us how we're able to work to try to transform the system when we're so much a part of it. We have to walk a very thin line of trying to build strong relationships um, with folks that we may have major philosophical differences with. Sometimes, honestly, that results in us feeling complicit in systems that we know are harming students. At the same time, we think it's strategic to be based in the school. We're able to see kind of the, both the challenges and also the opportunities and openings for changing things. The students are here every day experiencing these various types of injustice, um, being surveyed in the school, being treated differently by their teachers. One of the things that, that Palante seeks to do is to address that from within the very setting where students are located on the day-to-day. -day. Transformative justice work is engaging in the community in repairing harm, in um, building stronger relationships, but then getting at the deeper root of the issues. How are the institutions that we're operating in in our communities making it difficult for young people to know how to negotiate conflict? So Palante emerged in a context where school pushout was really the norm in Holyoke at that time. Students were regularly suspended for very small infractions like being late to school a certain number of times, you get a suspension. So when we started Palante, we knew we wanted to support students with their personal and interpersonal challenges, but we also knew that that wouldn't be enough. We knew that we had to get down to the systemic oppression that was at the root of a lot of these issues they were dealing with. So after two years of research and study, we inducted the first 15 student peer leaders into the program. Palante stands out as one of the only restorative justice programs that is truly youth-led in the country. Within a few years, uh, we had significantly dropped the suspension rate. We had an engaged group of young people leading the work and really trying to not only um, support young people during the school day, but, but think about how are we going to uh, create change at the classroom level, at the curricular level. What I like most about the program is the fact that it's really student-led and student-driven. So the values of the program aren't something that is from the top down, like adults telling young people that this is the program, these are the values, this is the work we should be doing, but like from the bottom up, the students themselves, based on personal experiences with the school system, with teachers, with educators, turning that frustration into energy in a program that has now made a really substantial difference in the way that issues and conflicts are handled. We really, really believe in young people making decisions and young people being at the forefront of our movements, but we also believe in this intergenerational connection. We don't believe that there should be an absence of adult presence, that actually young people flourish the most when they have love, guidance, and support. We really try to build those youth-adult partnerships to help young people lead and dream and create the world of their imaginings. Another secret to our success is that we really try to build in structures into our program that support their leadership at every level. So there's always another opportunity to grow and develop as, as a leader. As Palante Peer Leaders, we use circle practice to support our school community. A lot of people are surprised when they hear that young people are the ones who actually host our circles. A lot of schools have someone like me who work in them and is the person who leads every restorative justice process. But in our program, everything is led by young people. So my job is really just to support the students to host. And there's a couple different ways we prepare young people to do that kind of intense conflict work with other young people. We have a week-long institute where we do political education and a lot of circle practice training. And then we do day-long circles, sometimes throughout the year, so that folks can get more experience being in circles. And then for each individual case that we get, a peer leader is prepped pretty intensely by either myself or another staff member, and they help us think about what should the plan look like, um, what are the questions that we need to ask, and then by the time that that circle happens, they're fully prepared to do all of the hosting. We have an adult present who participates, um, but the hosting is really done by the students themselves. Meeting all the new people that walk through the door, just seeing them and talking to them and talking through their problems, it doesn't 
I don't only help them, but I help myself in a way because like sometimes I'm going through similar situations and it, like I reflect on myself. Supporting others and hosting circles is just an awesome experience. It's helped with my leadership skills, my communication skills, and also like creating bonds and relationships. Another way that we develop leadership is through a youth participatory action research project that we do each year. Through YPAR, we learn to identify problems in our community, develop a deeper understanding of the problem, and then do something about it. The YPAR projects have impacted me because like, they give me a different view on how things work in our school. And I just think it's important because if we don't make the change, who's going to do it? We need to get up, speak up, and make a change. Through YPAR a few years ago, we focused on the in-house suspension room, which was called the student support room, but it wasn't really supportive. Before it was transformed, it, was, it seemed more of a prison. Like the, the desks were in rows and columns. Now three years later, we have a very positive space with a full-time coordinator, several social work interns, and an AmeriCorps member. Now it's like really lively. We have plants everywhere, we have colors, and we have artwork made by other students. A student support room provides like a really nice space for us to hold our meetings. Um, it gives us a space that uh, students feel comfortable and we can um, support them emotionally and mentally in all sorts of ways. Peer leaders can sign up to be basically an intern or a TA in the student support room. They provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, support to students, whether it's academic or emotional. And they also just help manage and run the space. I love giving back to my community, like letting my peers know that they have a helping hand, that's something that I wish I had when I wasn't a teacher's assistant. We also have other structures in place to develop our students as leaders. The Youth Advisory Board is a rotating group of about five students who meet with me every week to make important decisions about the program and plan all of our larger meetings. The Youth Advisory Board helped us create this alumni fellowship program. Young people who do end up graduating or do end up getting like leaving and having a life outside of high school can still stay engaged in the program. Um, with young people there's kind of this cascading mentorship model that happens um, where I'm able to give a lot of support to our fellows and then the fellows are then able to give a lot of support. We're able to reach more students actually. So instead we've tried to build this, build this leadership pipeline rather than a school to prison pipeline. Hopefully one day um, me and Luke can leave this program and it'll be in the hands of former peer leaders. Being an alumni fellowship has given me a lot of great things, a lot of benefits, a lot of skills, especially life skills, communication skills. I also noticed the injustices that happen in the school community and whole community, but instead of being a bystander, I now fight against them. Even though we're based in a school, we know that it's also important to be connected to our larger community. This is why last year we started our community advisory board. Our CAB provides both students and staff with support and guidance. We run the CAB just like they run their circles, and so I think it's bringing that knowledge into the community because the CAB isn't, they don't meet here in the school system, they meet out in the community. Seeing them like hear us out and work with us instead of hearing us and then working within themselves, I think that's, it's really amazing. In Palante, we try to start building the world that we're dreaming of in the way that we are with each other. We do a lot of relationship building, whether it be through having breakfast together, field trips, or karaoke parties. Palante provides like pretty much a shoulder for a lot of the students and a lot of help to students. So also if students aren't on track with their grades, Palante could help them with their grades. After joining this program, I became responsible. I've stepped up my schoolwork. I, I would have never thought I would go into college they were a listening ear if I couldn't go to someone in my family. They were always there. They're like my second family. They've also made me more outgoing as a person. And also now I can see myself as a leader. What we're doing here in Holyoke is built particularly for our own school and our own city. But we know that the work we're doing is part of a larger movement for educational justice. We hope this video is one step in that direction. See you, Palante.